Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Early when I talked about uh, bringing in uh, JAXRS, and in particular bringing in uh, Jersey, I showed you how you had to set up the servlet with servlet and servlet mapping, and I indicated that there was also one other element you had to have in your WebXML, something called the init param element to help specify some additional information to your Jersey adapter servlet to tell Jersey how to operate with your resources. Exactly what is that init param? Well, that init param is a mechanism that tells your uh, Jersey environment, your JAX RS environment, about where and what resources you have available in your web container. In other words, it's not uh, just enough to tell uh, the Jersey environment that you have uh, a set of uh, resources and how you want URLs to map to those resources. You also have to tell Jersey where those resources are. How do you do that? Well, there are a number of options for identifying resources. In fact, I won't cover them all today. I'll leave that as an exercise for your research. But I'll give you one example. That is, here's the kind of the simplest way to do that is to specify where the actual REST services are. In this particular case, that we're going to do it by packages. So we're saying that via packages, we want the Jersey adapter servlet to go out and find all annotated RESTful web services, in this case, in the commintertech orders.rest package, as well as the commintertech accounts.rex package. So we're doing it essentially a search by a package for all those JAXRS annotated web services. Several different ways, again, to uh, provide this. and You can even uh, write some code programmatically to add uh, RESTful web services into the purview of the Jersey adapter server. But you have to some way tell it where the resources are. So that's the last element in the setup of our Jersey environment. Let's do a little bit of a more complex demo then in JAXRS, uh, just to take a look at something in maybe a little bit more real world than Hello World and uh, JAXRS, and in particular, the Jersey implementation. So I'll give you one second as I switch over to my Eclipse environment again, gang. And in this particular case, again, what I have done is uh, set this all up as the same project. So both Hello World as well as my little contact management application is all part of the same environment. So again, we've got our servlet element that specifies that we're running the Jersey implementation, and here's our Jersey adapter servlet, as we talked about before. Here now you also get a chance to see the use of that init parameter. In this case, again, I'm using the simple package mechanism. I'm telling Jersey that I want it to go out and look for all JAX RS resources in the com intertech resource package. Again, we'll need the servlet mapping. So in our particular case, slash resources, anything, is going to be mapped to, or if you will, routed from a traffic perspective off that Jersey adapter servlet, and then subsequently on to our particular POJOs that serve as our RESTful resources. Okay, with uh, WebXML understood, let's go take a look at what I provided here in terms of a little bit more of a complex RESTful web service using JAX RS, Jersey implementation. So I've got a little class here, a little POJO I call contact resource. What I've built is a small little application that provides contact information. What this uh, resource does is it goes out and uses a database connection to, in this case, a little HSQL database that stores contacts. And you might say, well, what does a contact look like? Let me bring that up for us. Here's a contact. The contact is nothing more than essentially a, an ID, a first name, last name, things like date of birth, uh, barrel status, how many children a person has, along with maybe a little bit more complex data. The contact has the ability to have an address object, giving us things like the street name, uh, street, um, city, state, zip code information for that particular contact. What I used is Hibernate to uh, get the data in and out of a HSQL database for this contact information. I want you to also notice while I'm here in contact, notice that there are a number of at XML annotations. What are these again? Well, for those of you who are uh, participating in JAXWS SOAP-based web services, uh, these are those JAXB annotations. So I've already annotated my domain class, my contact domain class here, with those JAXB annotations. Why? Because I want to be able to get contacts not only in, say, simple text form, but also in JSON at XML format as well. All right, now back to my resource. So my contact resource uh, 
you'll notice is a dependency injected with a contact DL, so it can communicate with the data uh, database. And then here are my actual resource methods, my verbs, again, if you will, in the resource setting. I'm going to allow people to get a contact by passing me an ID by the path parameter. I will also allow them to get it not only in XML format, but also in J, uh, JSON format. And finally, we've got a get in plain text format. So in this case, you see three get methods, all essentially providing the same data. In other words, give me an ID, and I'll give you a contact record, but all in different formats, allowing our clients to specify the format they like by the particular get request they make, whether they specify it via JSON, via text, or via what is default. Just give me an ID, and I'm going to assume all you wanted in is XML. So that's pretty typical in a RESTful world, is as part of the path, you help specify what type of data you'd like, what format of data you'd like. So those are my get methods. What else do I have? Well, I also have a get method that allows me to get back all of the contacts. In other words, not only can I provide one contact in XML format or JSON format, I can get back all contacts. And you'll notice here I'm giving you a collection of contacts. And again, the marshalling and unmarshalling of all that data will be handled by a JAX RS. Let me move a little bit lower down and get away from some of the get methods. And let's take a look at, for example, one of the post methods. In this case, to be able to add a contact. I put together a simple little HTML forum that supplies things like first name, last name, date of birth data. All that is passed in through the uh, post mechanism of the form into this particular method, at con add contact. All that data is then used to help build a new contact record and insert it into the database. And for completeness sake, once you get a chance to download this code, take a look also at methods to delete a contact and update a contact's children. So all sorts of methods do things like get, put, post, delete, as we see in a normal RESTful type of application. So let's go take a look and see this uh, application run. So in my particular case, I've got it set up to run right here in contact. So let me uh, run that on the server for us here. Okay, so I've brought up a simple little uh, index HTML page that just gives us kind of a way to explore these REST web services without me having to type in all of the uh, all of the URLs into my little browser. So I'll expand my browser so we can actually take a look at those uh, URLs when they come up. The first link here allows me to go out and take a look at all contacts in XML format. Uh, draw your attention again to the URL. Notice we're just calling on my server. Calling on my project name, is, if you will, my uh, application context, RESTful context, slash resources, as we saw defined in the WebXML, slash contact. Notice I didn't provide any other type of uh, data as part of the parameters, so my RESTful web service interprets that as a request for all contacts, and in this case, all contacts by default in XML. So if we take a look, we'll see all my contact data. Now, did I have to provide the mechanism or the means to supply all that XML data? Nope. I just had to take my contact class and annotate that with the JAXB annotations. Now, if you think, well, that's pretty neat, what about in other formats? Let's take a look at all contacts in the JSON format. Notice, again, my URL is the same, save one little path uh, addition, slash JSON. So my clients, in effect, are requesting their format of the data as they so desire, simply via URI. And now I see my uh, data coming back in JSON format as opposed to XML. And if you'd like, yep, we could even get that same data back, in this case, in plain text. I put it in uh, just comma-separated format as a, a collection of records out there. Let's take a look at uh, maybe requesting a particular contact. So let's request uh, contact number two. So again, I'm using a, a form mechanism. Obviously, in a machine-to-machine -machine type of facilitation, the URIs we'd seen wouldn't necessarily be manufactured by a browser, but by some sort of client application. So my uh, URL in this case, again, for the same resource contacts application, same slash resource location, slash contact. And now I see an ID number that's specifying which particular contact I'd like to see. So I wanted contact number two, which just happens to be George Bush. So hopefully you're getting a sense and feel for how the JAX RS mechanism, and in addition, 
with uh, Jax B's uh, annotations allows me to get back all sorts of resources. Again, a resource can be just about any conceptual thing we might have in our domain in all sorts of formats dictated per my client request. So there's a George Bush in XML format taking a look at the same request. The only addition we see now in our URL is the format request for slash JSON. And yep, that same application that I've shown you also comes complete with the ability to add contacts, delete, or update contacts. Now, again, whether or not you want to provide that as part of the capability of your application, well, that can be questioned. Whether or not uh, our clients be able to update and delete our contacts uh, is questionable, but it will give you an idea about how the JAX RS uh, API can be very, very helpful in creating some pretty neat, lightweight web services. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.